Here we have a reproductive tonic that nourishes and builds while at the same time decongesting the lymphatic system. That's an unusual combination. Usually herbs that nourish and build cause congestion and blood stasis because they thicken the blood. But Gakshura does the opposite. It decongests the lymphatic system. So, uh, so that makes it unique and unusual. Uh, we like to find herbs that have unique properties because it helps uh, us when we see a constitution that needs a unique combination of herbal actions. Gakshura has a third uh, main use, which is calming the nervous system. So we're going to use Gakshura's dissolving, decongesting properties in the urinary tract, its reproductive uh, and tonic abilities uh, for the genital organs um, and uh, muscle building, and we're going to use its nerve calming properties uh, for... Uh, mental health. Great. Here's a picture of Gakshura. It grows uh, widely throughout the United States. It's not native to the United States, but it's become naturalized here. And you could see uh, those uh, thorny spikes on the seeds of Gakshura in the lower picture on the screen. And I've stepped on these and had to pull them out of my foot uh, in Florida, uh, in New Mexico. Uh, so, Gak Shura means the hoof of a cow. And uh, that is a sort of menacing looking fruit. It spreads along the ground and it uh, those spines pierce the feet of cows while they're walking. Uh, the family of Gak Shura is Zygophilaceae. And uh, the subfamily, Tribuloidae. And uh, let's break down that, that family. Zygo means double. And Philon means leaf in Greek. So this is the double leaf plant family. The botanical name of Gakshura is called Tribulus terrestris. And tribulus means having three sides, and terrestrious means uh, from the, or of the ground. So this is going to be a ground-crawling uh, plant with, I guess, some part of it has three sides. Maybe they're referring to the, the fruit there, but the fruit looks like four sections. So, hmm. All right, in English, sometimes it's called puncture vine. Taking from the 10,000 foot perspective, this is an herb that nourishes, decongests, and calms. It's a cooling diuretic that dissolves stones and buildup, and it's a reproductive tonic and pain reducer. I like to think of Gakshura as a cool version of ashwagandha. So ashwagandha is a little bit uh, is a little bit more invigorating. These are, but these are both herbs that improve vigor. Ashwagandha is hot, and Gakshura is cold. Uh, they're both male reproductive tonics, and uh, Gakshura is also a female reproductive tonic, not just a, exclusive to men. But uh, okay, I also think of Gakshura as a building mangista. So mangista is a lymphatic decongestant and dissolving uh, herb. So is Gakshura, but Gakshura is tonic and it builds, whereas Mangista reduces. I also think of Gakshura as a reproductive go to cola. So, go to cola, or Brahmi go to cola, as it's sometimes called, is uh, a, a nervine and nerve tonic. Well, so is Gakshura, but Gakshura is also a reproductive tonic, whereas Brahmi go to cola is not. So there you go, three herbs uh, that have some uh, similarity in some actions, but not others. Uh, I, th I find Gakshura tastes like a cafe latte, but uh, more astringent. It just it tastes like coffee with milk and a little bit of sugar to me. It's used in uh, tradition, both traditional Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine, the roots and the fruit.
to uh, treat inflammation, disorders of the urinary and respiratory tract, and erectile dysfunction. As I mentioned, it's a sweet, bitter herb. It's cold and heavy, moistening. It can increase ama in excess as a result, but it also decongests. So what can, what can we say? It's tridoshic herb, vata pitta kapha, uh, pacifying. Its main, uh, the tissues and organs and systems that it has a main affinity for are the plasma generally, muscles, um, nerves, and the reproductive tract, as well as the urinary tract. To some extent, the respiratory tract and the skin. My kids step on this spiny herb all the time um, when, uh, when we visit St. Augustine. Uh, they're growing uh, in St. Augustine, and I have to pull the spines out of their feet. It's native to the sub-Himalayan forests of India, of Eurasia, and Africa. It thrives in full sun. It prefers dry, sandy soil, and it likes a dry climate. That's why it was so prevalent in New Mexico. It grows along roadsides and pastures. So there you go. You see it kind of growing along the ground. It's a little botanical sketch. There's a close-up of those spikes. The fruit is a very distinct feature of this plant. Sharp, spiky green spheres when uh, fresh and becomes more yellow-beige once it's dried. And to me, it always looks like a medieval spike ball. You know, that medieval weapon, uh, a spiky ball on the end of a chain. Look at these beautiful yellow flowers. Similar looking to, similar yellow, yellow, in yellow to a buttercup. Uh, but five petals here. Let's see, how many stamens? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, looks like nine stamens. Is that true for each of them? Uh, or is it just many stamens? We have to take a look. Look at those leaves, a little bit of hairiness on the leaves there. Small, flat, oval leaves sit opposite each other on a sturdy stem. There you go. Stems can reach about 10 centimeters or 3.9 inches. And flowers can get to about a half inch. So I'll look at the fine hair that's covering the leaves and the stems there. Even the sepals of the flower. There's the root. Here's the harvested parts, dried. It has some, I said before it's tridoshic, but it has the, it's more vata pitta pacifying. And as, as, because it's a building nourishing tonic, it could aggravate kapha in some instances. So just remember that. We're not going to like use it to reduce kapha, but it might not aggravate kapha too much. So if we're looking at an elderly male, um, you know, this uh, might be an appropriate, or an elderly kapha male. So a kapha person in vata time of life will probably do fine with this. Again, in summary, and we're going to jump right in, uh, this is a decongesting and dissolving herb. It's a reproductive tonic. It calms nerves. Let's go into its decongesting properties first, and then we'll jump into... Uh, the uh, its reproductive tonic actions and how it calms nerves. <laughs>